G'day Internet and welcome back to part two of my series on this TRS-80 Model 1 uh, and my next video in the SEP Tandy series. So where we left off, we'd uh, I'd built the power supply uh, and the machine booted and ran uh, and everything seemed to be happy, but the keyboard was still, there were stuck keys and keys that wouldn't work and so on and so forth. Uh, and there's also a bunch of little things broken with the case, so I want to take a look at that as well. So let's get going right so with the power supply out of the way we we'll turn our attention back to the actual computer so the keyboard is i've got sticky keys shift sticks d sticks um so it needs a good cleanup the insides are actually pretty dirty um if i just put that out of the way um all the spaces uh, have disintegrated and I've 3D printed some new ones. So let's start by tackling the keyboard. We do this by lifting, uh, let's lift the keyboard out slightly, pull that out of the way, get rid of the base. So the TRS-80 is actually, the keyboard is connected permanently by, via this ribbon cable and like most Mine has actually started to flake away, so and there's not much left of it. So I'm going to be replacing that with this bit of ribbon cable that I've already prepared. Uh, it's just a 40-core um, bit of ribbon cable with every second wire taken out to give us our 20 pins that we need. Um, so, but for now, we can actually go. Oh, that was scary. Right, okay. So we'll put the main PCB to one side and concentrate on this. I think the first thing I'm going to want to do, though, is to remove all the keycaps, which is always a fun job. So that's significantly less bad. Uh, it's not full of hair and dust and all the rest of it. But if we zoom in, just give me a sec to zoom in. The way this actually works is the key press actually pushes down this outer cylinder. And if you can see, as I press down, the two contacts meet. And that is how the circuit is completed for each switch. So what I'm going to do is with some fine sandpaper doubled over, I'm going to go through and I'm going to clean every one of these terminals. Okay, so we'll let the contact cleaner evaporate for a while, and in the meantime, I'm going to put all these disgusting 
keycaps into a bowl of warm soapy water and let them soak and I'll give them a scrub. So now that it's all back together, I'm going to, well, I'm going to pull it apart once again, um, because there's something else I actually do need to fix. If we pull the lid off and it's not screwed together for a reason, you'll see that the two screw hole standoffs here are broken. So what I have is, uh, let's put that there. I have these that I've 3D printed and these will glue in here like this and be the new standoffs. So what I would need to do first is, let's just shuffle that out of the way, is I want to, here are all the screws, uh, they all still need cleaning up and stuff but the thread size is all the same and what I actually want to do is I want to cut the thread in first. So we put this in and this is basically so I can put all all this extra force that's required to get the screw to cut in and thread I can do now so I'm not putting all that force on it later on. Right and the other one Right, so that's that done. So the threads are now cut into the standoffs, which is good. We now go back to the Tandy and remove you for a minute. And let's just pull the board and keyboard out for the umpteenth time. And the way I'm gonna do it is this. I know that these meet up with that there right and the other one wherever I put it so that eventually ends up there like that so to make sure that I've got the size and depth right and all that kind of stuff I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and I'm actually going to just oh, it's a bit wide hang on just going to tape these in so they kind of sit in the right place and this one too because what I want before I go covering everything in super glue and what have you I want to make sure that when I put that down everything's actually going to meet up and if I look I uh, don't not sure if you can see that but 
It does. All right, so I'm happy with that, and everything actually lines up all on the little edges that it should. So if we now take that off, take these back out, now the masking tape wants to do what it's to, what it was meant to. Right. Uh, da -da -da, da -da -da. Right. Okay, put that aside. Now I've got to remember that I'm doing this on the other itself. We flip that, and then that needs to go there, and that needs to go there, and that gets super glued in that side, and that gets super glued in that side there. Uh, right, so let's do one at a time. I have my super glue. And, and let's be honest, I've got one shot at this. And the super glue doesn't want to come out. Give me a minute. Okay, so as we know, this one goes here and this one goes there like that. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this Loctite plastics glue. So we have the activator, which is this texture looking thing, <clears throat> and we cover <clears throat> and we cover both surfaces with this. And we give that on the instructions I believe. I think we give that 30 seconds. We now apply our glue. Whoop, that was a bit too much. And we put this down making sure that the inside corners there are lined up like so. Plenty of downward pressure. That's in nice and firmly. Now, let me just clean this side with some isopropyl alcohol, just to make sure it's nice and clean. And it wasn't, it was quite dirty actually. Just give this a wipe over, just in case. So it's both surfaces now clean. We now again take our activator pen, put our glue down, lid back on so it doesn't dry out again, and that should drop straight into there, like that, downward pressure. Right oh. So now we can actually put it back together again. So one thing you may have noticed about this uh, particular TRS-80 is this panel here being missing. Now when you originally just bought the machine, this was just a blanking cover, uh, but there was a version of that cover that had a slot in it to allow the ribbon cable out for the expansion unit. But over the years they're all broken or the clips have gone or they're just simply flat out missing. But I jumped on Thingiverse and I'll put a link in the description and I found the design for one and I had it 3D printed. Well I 3D printed it. Now, obviously this is 3D printed, so on the other side it's still all rough like a normal 3D print is, but after much, much filling and sanding and filling and sanding and more sanding, uh, and also having a spray pack colour matched to this actual computer, 
um, I've ended up with this and it actually looks really quite nice and all the clips and everything work and that just simply goes into there snaps down and look we now have a complete TRS-80 case righto and I actually think that turned out pretty well we now have a case that holds itself together we've got a keyboard that works we've got a power supply that powers but all in all, I think it's turned out really good and I really, really love this computer. Now, I did actually have thoughts on upgrading it. I even got to the point of buying all the bits for it. Um, so that was a, a level two basic update and the lowercase character set. And I kind of hummed and hard and a few people were fairly determined to talk me out of it. And I'm kind of glad they did. And the reason is this. These a very early level one machines are actually quite rare now um, primarily because as soon as the level two upgrade was available from Tandy or Radio Shack or whatever um, everyone took their machines in and got them upgraded so the ones that haven't been upgraded are actually fairly few and far between so I'm kinda happy and at the end of the day in 1977 or early 78 or whatever um, if you went into your local Tandy or Radio Shack uh, store this is what you would have come home with. You would have come home with this monitor, this computer, a power supply, and a tape deck. Um, not this one. This is a later one. I do actually have the original one. Yeah, it um, yeah, it died about five minutes before I started filming the first episode of this series. Anyway, um, so I'm really happy. In part three of this video series, uh, I'm going to be doing a bit of a retrospective. Uh, looking at the history of this computer, what this particular computer was capable of, uh, and then also where this led to in regards to the lineage of the TRS-80 line. Um, so that will be coming up in part three of uh, my Sep Tandy uh, videos. Uh, and speaking of Sep Tandy, Sep Tandy, I want to give a big shout out once again to uh, Adrian Black, uh, Ak, Bu uh, Ak Bakuku, uh, and Dave Just Dave. So cheers guys uh, and thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.